Kim Campbell, and I have a very special recipe for you today. It's called Muhammara. And I chose this because it's a really fun Lebanese dish. And I love hummus, but sometimes I get tired of hummus. And it seems like that's always our go-to um, when we're looking for a dip or a spread. But this one's actually very unique. Um, we are just starting to do these and it's it's a it's pretty much a one man sort of a two man show so we're working on the lighting and getting everything correct but hopefully if you want to look down at what i'm doing we've got the camera going that way and if you want to look straight at me you can so anyways let's get started this recipe is in the plant pure comfort food cookbook and it is the last cookbook i wrote i have been put it underneath the camera so you can see it Plant Pure Comfort Food, and it's on page 119, Muhammara, and it goes great on toast or flatbread. It's great with crackers. There's a dip with veggies or whatever you want to do. All right, so we're going to start with um, roasted red peppers. That is the key to this recipe. I don't know of any substitution for roasted red peppers. So what I did is I cheated, and I went out and I bought a jar of roasted red peppers. But if you want to, you can roast them yourself and I'll give you a, a quick lesson on that. So I put this in the oven at 450 degrees for about 25 minutes and it really started to shrivel and you're going to take the skin off so don't worry about that getting really dark and then what you do I didn't even cut it I just did a bowl put it in a bowl and cover it with saran wrap and let it cool because as it cools it begins to shrivel and then you can just pull the skin right off and then you can use the the meat of the red pepper but we're not going to do that today we're going we're gonna to do the eat version because that's what i'm all about all right i've used about 16 ounces of roasted red peppers drain it just a second here I always keep, to me, this is a staple. I always keep a jar of roasted red peppers in my pantry because I like to I like to make sauces with it and things. All right, then we're going to use one cup of toasted walnuts. Toasted walnuts, if you toast them, it's going to bring out the flavor. Just like when you toast bread, it just has a little bit more flavor. So you can toast them in the oven. You can toast them on the stovetop, but just make sure you're really careful not to over toast them because there's so much oils and these natural oils that it will burn quickly. So one cup of walnuts. If you can't have walnuts, because some people will say they might not want walnuts, try nuts and seeds. You could probably use sunflower seeds or you could use hemp seeds or you could try a different nut if you want to use cashews. But the walnuts are what give it a little bit of flavor. Then it calls for about two garlic cloves. And if you know me, I never follow the directions. I'm going to use four garlic cloves because I love garlic. That's the fun thing about a dip or a recipe. You could just make it and tailor it to your own. Then this recipe calls for breadcrumbs. It calls for a half a cup of breadcrumbs. So what I do with breadcrumbs is I just, you know how you get the end of a loaf and nobody wants that? I save those. Sometimes I freeze them. And then I put them in this bandy little chopper. And it's got a pull string on it. And I just pull it. And it makes beautiful breadcrumbs. It's called for about a half a cup. I think I've got more than a half a cup. You don't want to use too much. I'm going to eyeball it here, you guys. You can measure it. I've made this so many times. I think I figured it out. All right, then we're going to use pomegranate molasses. So I went to two grocery stores today. I could not find it. I had some in my pantry and it expired and I didn't reorder it. So there's always a substitute for pomegranate molasses. And what it is, is I used one tablespoon of maple syrup and one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. It gives it that kind of sweet, sour kind of flavor. So we're going to add that. And if you're like me, unless you go to Whole Foods, and even then, you might not find it there. 
finding the substitute for that is really important. Then a tablespoon of tomato paste. That gives it that nice sort of sweet tomato-y flavor. Tablespoon of lemon juice. It's, and then, all right, the spices. It has one teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of cumin powder, and a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I know what you're gonna say, that's too hot. You can adjust the red pepper flakes. You don't even have to put it in or just put a pinch in but the capsaicin in the red pepper flakes is really good for you. So try to put a little bit in and get your, you know, your palate used to some spices. All right, so we'll put that in. That's it. That's all there is to it. I'm going to take my food processor. And I know some of you will probably say, can I use a blender? If you use, and you don't have a food processor, if you use a blender, it's going to be really smooth and creamy and... Muhammara is a little bit, I don't know, it's chunky and it's got texture to it and it's really nice. But if you like it smooth, you can have it smooth. I like it a little chunky. So here we go, I'm gonna pulse it. See that, but. It's, it's got a lot of texture and it's really a personal preference. You take it where you want to take it. That's as far as I want to go with it. If you're gluten-free, you, you can use something other than bread. You can use gluten-free breadcrumbs or I don't know, um, maybe oats. I'm not really sure. It smells so good. So I made this for my daughter not long ago, she got hooked on it. She said, Mama, this is so, this is so much better than hummus. So I think it's really nice to kind of switch up your dips. And this is a great thing to take to, you know, to a you know, this dish to pass or something. People are always, they're always wowed by a dish like this. So then you're going to think I'm really weird when I tell you this is breakfast for me. I love to have, oops, a little bit closer. I love to have a savory breakfast. I like avocado toast. I like peanut butter toast. I'm not much of an oatmeal person. I do do it, but this is going to be my breakfast in the morning. So I have some homemade bread. You can put it on anything you want. Um, put it on a whole grain bagel. And then I'm going to put some red onions on the top. And then a little bit of arugula. And I should have chopped it. I didn't prepare enough for the show. But... And that, I'll have a couple pieces of that for breakfast. And I'm just going to cook taste. Oh, my goodness. It is, it's, it's kind of sweet. It's got a um, little bit of a sour, tomato-y. Red peppers, roasted red peppers are kind of sweet and citrusy. I forgot to put the salt in here. But actually, this is really good without any salt. If you're gonna use salt, just start out with a quarter of a teaspoon or just a pinch, because for this recipe, I really don't think we need it. Okay. Oh, that's so good. It's so much better than hummus. I like hummus, but I love this. All right, I hope you'll come back and enjoy us, um, enjoy us in our kitchen. We're gonna be doing these, I'm not gonna edit them. The only reason I'm gonna edit is if there's cook time, we put something in the oven or the Instant Pot, I'll chop it. But this one has not been chopped, so um, it's mostly just live, but it's not live really. So I hope you'll come back and enjoy some more great recipes with us and I'll see you back here soon. Have a great day.